So good morning, uh, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Rudy Kubli, and I'm a sales engineer and team leader in the Fortinet team at Ball Engineering. And in the session, we will learn more about uh, security as code. And uh, this session consists of three parts, and we will have a break in between. Uh, Philip, Saint Pierre, and audience Amelie will be leading the session. If you have any questions, uh, please use the chat or Q&A function, and we'll try to answer them in, in, uh, in the session. Uh, the recording and presentations uh, we will make available afterwards. Now, I'm looking forward to an exciting session, and I will hand over to you, Philip. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Rudy, and, um, and uh, very pleased for the invite today. And I'm uh, also uh, you know, really pleased that you could join because security automation, security as code is not um, yet a, a mainstream. That's not obviously the, the where Fortinet is known either. So this is for us a way to um, share with you what we can enable here, uh, some best practice, and then have a discussion. Yeah, I think we have uh, uh, an opportunity as we have quite a, a bit of time today, this morning. Uh, we can have an exchange we can you can also ask questions don't worry and this this is fine uh, we can go a bit uh, in in um, in depth also into this um, just to get started obviously um, we are not uh, experts so myself and uh, adrien we are uh, here to um, share with you what is the um, fortinet value proposal and obviously we have quite a, a large team of um, uh, security as code developer that we can also tap into as you get projects and we'll be happy to support. So my name is Philippe St. Pierre. I'm in charge of cloud business development for Switzerland within Fortinet. And I'm also pleased to introduce you, uh, Adrien. Thank you, Philippe. My name is Adrien Samedi. I'm system engineer with Fortinet for public cloud. And that's the reason why I'm here. So I'm looking Great. forward for the session. <laughs> Thank you very much, Adrien. <laughs> thanks a lot. So let's get started. And again, thanks for your participation today. Uh, we will talk about security automation. That's item one. Uh, we will try to explain the, obviously, briefly, high level, the principles, uh, the value proposal, the, the key um, aspects about automation and how Fortinet can, can enable it. Then we will do a quick break because the first agenda item will take a good one hour. We'll do like a just five minute break and then we'll talk about container security, container monitoring, container protection, compliance management, and then we'll talk about um, DevSecOps and application uh, scanning, application security within the CI CD pipeline. So, the, the, these three topics are really about, um, uh, yeah, uh, container protection and, and development. Yeah. So, the, this is really complementary. And this is something, as I said, which is uh, not really um, uh, shared uh, widely. So this is, again, something I'm happy to, uh, to exchange with you. So let's get started. So why do we talk about security automation? Um, so this is a bit the, the high level picture about the, the trends yeah, for 2022 onward. As you are aware, um, in Switzerland, uh, the cloud and the digital transformation are accelerating. And obviously, a lot of enterprise and even public sector now are looking into uh, uh, new application development into public cloud. Uh, we are expecting that, uh, I mean, all customers, we are talking about 95%, yeah, will, will be using cloud uh, into this uh, year and, and forward. So this is a massive acceleration into new application development into cloud. And obviously, cloud security becomes uh, absolutely critical now. Uh, now, a lot of the enterprise and public sector who has adopted the cloud um, find themselves into um, manual security, manual networking settings and management and operation. And obviously, as you know, the, the cloud has its own uh, networking and, and sometimes also security aspects. So, uh, that is um, clearly an additional complexity. And a lot of organizations are looking now into automation to simplify, to save time, to uh, reduce that complexity. And this is clearly uh, a trend which is accelerating. 
And then um, obviously the, the, the application developments becoming now cloud native are all adopting container microservices. We, we are going to move um, you know, to about 70% of the uh, companies that are going to use um, uh, at least two containerized applications by 2023. So this is the Gartner projection. And, and, and here we are talking also uh, Switzerland, yeah? And Europe. So this is really um, the reason why, um, as not only cloud uh, native application design with container uh, and, uh, and microservices, DevSecOps is accelerating, then cloud native security is becoming critical because that is um, uh, how the IT teams can develop new tools and processes that embed security earlier into the, the process. Uh, of applications development. And then um, obviously, as much as you can embed security into application development, then you can obviously adopt security as code, yeah? So this is, um, this is really the trend and that is accelerating uh, greatly into Switzerland. And obviously as a partner, uh, you need to help customer in this journey. And that is why we, we have this discussion today. So automation. Why is it important? Because it's simple, it's um, cost uh, reduction, yeah? It is more about um, uh, removing the manual tasks into security operation, security deployment. This is to create simplify um, uh, repeatable processes. And this is about agility, as we just discussed about application development, and also as a security manager uh, into the, the, any company, you want to be consistent with your security rules and security posture between your current data center, let's call it legacy environment, yeah? And uh, existing applications that are running in your data center plus your database, you want to be consistent into your security uh, in this new application development world with the public cloud. So you want to make sure that your security rules, policies are obviously deployed into public cloud. And obviously you want to automate all of that so that it's, it's not a human uh, task every time someone is creating a landing zone and provisioning new applications, new cloud um, resources or YAS and PaaS. So this is why automation is creating a lot of uh, value to your customers is to uh, create agility, speed, reduce cost, yeah? So it's becoming uh, now a key um, focus. And uh, what is infrastructure as code, yeah? Uh, I mean, it's, it's really to write a bit of software, you know, uh, JSON or, uh, you know, uh, code to provision, you know, uh, storage, uh, compute, and, and that's exactly the same for, for, soft, for security. So we are uh, just extending, um, you know, I would say uh, infrastructure as code to security as code. And this is in the end really uh, to benefit from that automation. So the, the last slide on high level uh, concept and generic statement, I would say, is about the, um, the, the, the key uh, driver and the, and the benefits, yeah? It's just a visual slide. So it's not, we talked about speed and agility as a business enabler. Uh, security as code is a way for sure to help the business uh, on board, I would say any new cloud platform or any new applications with the uh, automated security deployment so that you don't have a human being to approve or to configure or to set up. So this is the, the main benefit as we just said, yeah? Obviously, risk reduction in an, is another key benefit because as you automate against predefined templates that themselves will be against specific um, uh, context, then uh, you reduce the risk by the fact there is no human intervention into the, the chain. Yeah, So that, that is one of the key aspects about automation. It is, uh, you see, predictable, repeatable because you deploy the same template for the same type of business rules and you start to progress into security by design, which is really key for compliance management. And more, or more and more companies are being now obviously looking into cloud and compliance is a key 
um, I would say, uh, focus into this cloud journey. So enabling that security as code and that automation is a way to guarantee compliance and to also uh, report compliance into a, a better and simpler way. And last, this is about uh, how to test and how to repeat the, the I would say, the, the process. Yeah, you can test before deploying. So it helps you improve security overall. And you can ensure accuracy by improving continuously the, the security rules. So there's a lot of benefits into um, security as code versus managing security rules, I would say, uh, from a portal or, or manually. So one of the aspects about security automation is that it's, um, it's, it's a life cycle. It's not just something you start and, and you leave on a, on a, on a drawer. So you, you clearly start with the design phase. So here we will spend a bit of time to propose the best practice. Uh, then you, you look into how do I automate the deployment of, of my security uh, rules, policies, and templates, and then how to obviously automate the, the day two, yeah, the, the, the config, um, which is quite specific to application needs or, or user groups or clouds, I would say. And then you have to... Uh, uh, obviously automate the uh, incident response. And this is the most important because this is where you save the, the most um, uh, cost, I would say. Uh, that's where you minimize the um, uh, CISO and, and the security team, I would say, intervention by enforcing and automating the response. So we will focus a bit on, on that. We will have a demo together with Adrien. So we are going to demo the, the build and deploy and we will demo the, the response automation. Yeah, So this, this will be the two aspects we are trying to, um, to automate within Fortinet the, the most. And we will spend a bit of time on this. So first, I will explain um, our experience and best practice on the design and, and how we can obviously um, uh, you know, go through the key principles. And then we will go into build and, and we'll do a quick demo. So the, the design phase is obviously the most important because um, you cannot automate anything if you don't go back to the drawing board with your customer. And, and to be honest, that is the, the most complex because most of your customer are a bit uh, ground zero into how to automate, how to, how to uh, code my security. And, and that is where you may help the most, yeah? Um, because in the end, um, your customers already have security rules and policies. It's, it's already there. You know, it's not like if you start from a, a blank sheet of paper. Um, the, the only question now is not about uh, rewriting all the security rules and policy for automation, but is, is to create um, a, a logic and, and a wrapper that can encapsulate these rules by um, by specific, um, I would say, um, specific items like uh, organization, like applications, like you know, user type, like uh, location, like compliance um, requirements. So you will have to help your customer maybe encapsulate and redefine what we call the security organizational controls. So what are the the, the logic, yeah, what are the, uh, the, the encapsulation logic to regroup and redefine the security rules and policies by target, by, um, you know, by, by different, uh, by different uh, logics that can be then instantiated into the cloud, for example. So I think this is one of the, 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 the work that can be done here. Um, you have all the expertise to help your customer doing that. And, um, and this is something which is really the, the starting point of the automation journey. The next thing is this security governance engine. And uh, uh, this is where actually we, we try to leverage the, the, the work done by McKinsey um, is, is clearly where you want to automate the um, security deployment from a requester into production into provisioning, yeah? And that security governance engine can be specific to your customer. It can be uh, ServiceNow, 
yeah, you can have a new application owner uh, issue a request from ServiceNow, and then it creates um, provisioning of security rules into a new landing zone. So that could be a way, or it, it is something which you have to also uh, assess. It can be console, it can be Tuffin, it can be um, faulty manager. Uh, you have different ways, or you can also help your customer create a custom portal uh, to create uh, that provisioning process. But it is really important that you look into the security rules redesigned by encapsulating by a specific logic. And then you agree and define with your customer what will be the governance engine to deploy security into the, the new um, uh, environment. Yeah? So this is really the, the key components. And if I take an example of um, what has been done by one of our customers here in Switzerland, um, uh, you know, this customer was considering that um, uh, you know, the, the rules here can be grouped by site type. So for example, if you provision um, uh, networking and security into a branch, or a, a, a user site or a production site or a HQ, it, it's clearly not the same uh, security requirements and it's not the same uh, compliance, uh, you know, and, and the same if you deploy uh, uh, networking and security to a production site in, in South Africa, you have very specific security uh, expectations, yeah, and, and you want to limit access to specific data or, uh, or network connectivity to, to HQ in, in, in somehow where you want to segment the, the traffic. Yeah? So all of these uh, security controls were defined by location and by business at high level into this uh, organizational security control. Then this customer defined the specific rules according to business requirements. As I said, you know, if it's a production site, uh, what can be done in that site, what cannot be done about data manipulation, for example, and data storage and data access. So here you will, um, and network access. So here you will specify the security rules. And then the security policies were um, defined uh, into a, a set of uh, templates, uh, which then are um, deployed through Ansible. And the request come from actually ServiceNow and it triggers Ansible um, uh, templates into Azure, for example, yeah? And all of this would be uh, integrated through set of APIs. Um, so that is an example of what has been done um, by that customer. It, it's obviously a, a multinational customer, so they, they have a, a bit of... Uh, um, resources to create this framework, uh, and that is a key aspect, yeah. But I think this is really something as a partner, you should really, um, uh, you know, start um, onboarding and, and really showcase to your customer. And we can help you create this type of showcase, this kind this type of demo and POC, so you can really demonstrate the value of what automation can bring. Because here, if I take the example of that customer, um, any new branch or production site that is to be set, um, it's a click of a mouse. The, the requests come from ServiceNow, it's provisioned for a new application. Then uh, it triggers an Ansible uh, script, which then itself deploys the networking and the security. So by the security, we, we have obviously the pair of FortiGate uh, VMs uh, with all the security rules, which are provisioned automatically for that new site. Yeah. And here you have really the, the, the power of, um, of this because uh, obviously as soon as a new site, as soon as a new application, as soon as something is provisioned into, uh, into networking and security, then there is an uh, automatic uh, notification to the security team who can monitor how things are happening and they can obviously take actions to confirm and, and validate and uh, obviously put that into monitoring. So all of this is I would say 90% automated, and, and, and obviously the, the security team is, is monitoring the process and uh, ensuring it's working fine. So it's just an example of a real case here in Switzerland, and I'm happy to uh, spend more time on this. Yeah. So just a, a, a few a few aspects about again uh, the design phase and the the, the key principle. 
So first, uh, you need to do, um, uh, obviously, you need to, whenever you want to script security, uh, you want to understand, obviously, what are the, the, you know, the, I would say, the low-hanging fruit, yeah, as we say. What, what is uh, reusable and, and how can you gain the most by spending the less energy in, in developing? So you want to first assess and identify the, 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 yeah, the, the, the easier uh, and the faster, uh, I would say, automation opportunities. Then you need to create your security scripts into a modular approach um, using you know, a common uh, development platform like Ansible. And really, you want to make your code as dynamic and as, um, uh, as, as uh, leverageable as possible so that you can um, uh, leverage it and evolve it and you can publish your security as code central repository to the entire security team into the, the, the company and also within the, the partner yeah so that usually the, you, you as a partner you can help create this best practice and you can help enable the customer um, uh, I would say scripting uh, best practice here and that, that's really key, that's really key yeah and then you have also the security aspects where you need to uh, be always cautious about uh, uh, confidential data in the scripts, passwords, protection, uh, access on list privilege. So this is really key because that is also, you need to protect your repository of code, yeah? And you need to make sure it is itself not at risk. That is really key. So obviously I will share the material uh, with you and, and happy to discuss further on each of these aspects, but I'm going a bit fast. So we go to the demo. So the build and deploy. So we talked briefly about the design phase, which is where you as a partner will really help you know, the customer much, as I said. The build and deploy is, is maybe the easiest way because we have done our homework within Fortinet. Yeah? Uh, we have created templates. We have created um, uh, different solutions that you can tap into, leverage, and, and um, and, and this is really something which is uh, already existing in GitHub. And maybe I'll, I'll hand over to you, Adrian, because I can, I can speak about it uh, for another 10 minutes, but it's maybe better that, that you share what it is, yeah, where it is and how you can leverage it to, you know, as, as a partner, yeah? Sure, sure. Thanks a lot, Philip. I will quickly share my screen. Uh, I don't see the screen share button. Maybe I need some permissions. Maybe at the bottom, the, the green uh, small thing. I have it. Okay, got it. Share my browser. Okay, just say if you can see the screen now. Good. Yeah, we see it now. Okay, perfect. We have uh, different repositories within Fortinet. So one of those is the fortinet cloud repository on GitHub. So this is the repository of the EMEA team. So it's most likely a development repository. You have a bit more enhanced script, a bit more enhanced templates here, but they are not meant to be used in production. So for example, we have here in Fortinet Azure solutions, we see all the different products which we have available in public cloud, um, for the analyzer, for the gate, et cetera. And if we want to deploy anything like for the gate, uh, I have different flavors available. So this means, hey, I have a single VM, I have a different availability options. So means uh, if I want to have an active active cluster, active passive, I also have a decision matrix here, which helps me to decide, hey, which uh, one is the best for me. Or of course, you can also consult us. We are more than happy to help you with that as well. And if you found a solution for you, for example, the active passive template, it's a common one. Then you can just deploy it. Or you can, you, we will have first an overview of the template and you can see, you can also like deploy one for the gated one availability zone and the other one in, in the second one. 
so you can gain here very high availability and you can then just deploy it to the wizard by click with the mouse as soon as you click on it a new page is loading will be redirected to the azure portal and you can just fill in all the steps needed to deploy the 40 gig cluster so this is a very easy like landing zone how microsoft is calling it and it could be also deployed by script of course if you prefer this option you can always customize this template if you want um yeah this will also be up to date then Sorry, Phil, maybe you mute yourself because I, I hear you clicking. <laughs> so thanks for that. Um, then we have the official repository, the github.com slash Fortinet. This is the official one, which is maintained um, by the development team. And if you found uh, find any, any uh, indications within that, you can also reach out to the support at .com, or if you raise a support ticket uh, you can also mention this repository and it will be fully supported all right so now digging a bit more into the github infrastructure as a code so we built a small demo um you can see i just did a fork of this demo you can demo it by yourself as well uh, it's on the Fortinet Dash Cloud repository. So this is the picture. So we have our code on GitHub. And as soon as we do a new commit on the code, we trigger several actions. We will dig into that. It will automatically generate a pull request and then all the steps which we have to find will be done so we store the current state of our deployment in terraform cloud it's just our state repository call it like that and we are also using infracost infracost is a framework which allows us to dynamically um, calculate cost in the public cloud this means it will calculate the cost of the template and will also calculate what does the infrastructure cost on a monthly basis if we deploy this as we have scripted it. And then we have scripts, which is automatically deploying it to Azure and also to AWS. Uh, for this example, I have disabled the AWS part, so we're deploying it only. Um, let's have a quick look on the GitHub Actions. If you click here on Actions, you see here then the workflows which are defined. And if you click on the commit itself, you can see the two um, actions or jobs which will be done. So one we have Terraform and we have Ansible Terraform part is purely to deploy the whole infrastructure, means the 40 gate itself, the 40 gate cluster. And the Ansible part will then do the configuration inside of the 40 gate. So if we dig into that, you can see all the different steps and actions which have been performed during that job. Here as well, you can also review the output if there are any any errors you can also do here checks so if you have your own github repository you can also define checks within github actions to check if the template is as you want it i mean you can check for 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 different options or or different variables and or probe it or yeah, anything you can imagine. All right, so if we go back to the commit real quick, 
So we see here, I only have changed here uh, the, the description, so it will not um, generate any difference in cost. If I would change the instance type of the cloud um, instance, uh, it will change cost. So you see here, this code will cost in public cloud 97.95 US dollars a month. So we have no difference in here, but that said, if we would have any difference, we will see it here as a comment to the comment. We have also a script within that uh, code, which retrieves automatically the Flex VM token. So if we have Flex VM in use, we can just then um, define the API key uh, within the variables. And this script will then gather the token from our Flexium portal and automatically inject it through, during the deployment of the VM. This means we don't have to care about licensing anymore. It is very dynamic. It was very, very flexible. So that's why it's called FlexVM actually. So you can start and stop it as any time as you need. And if you want to upgrade, for example, the, the licensing or the feature set, you can easily do it within the portal itself. So this is the FlexVM portal. Uh, I guess some of you know it already. Um, I have here this license, for example, in use. You, see, you can see the state. The state here is active. I can also group it. I have different configurations available. I hope my session not expired. Yes, it did. Sorry for that. And for example, here I have a VM02 configuration, which means uh, it is for two CPUs with the service package UTM. Or I have here the VMUL means unlimited CPUs. Um, with all the UTM, it can, you can easily edit it and change the, the entitlement. You have an easy overview in here um, from the points perspective. So how many points will be uh, used or consumed at the moment or in future, you will have it all in here. You can also see it at the dashboard, um, how many points you have available and what is your average spend on the cost. All right, so as said, we have our Terraform Cloud. Um, let's open this real quick. So I have here my organization for the demo, for the demo Azure, and this is all the states which I have saved in here. So you can easily do it, you don't need any local Terraform state repository anymore within that. Okay. Um, now we can switch over to the 40 gate. So this is the 40 gate, which automatically have been deployed. We will see here, everything is orange because I have set the license to expire by tomorrow on the FlexVM portal, but this is all fine. And we have also here configured an uh, SDN connector. This means the whole 40 gate is connected to the public cloud and it can pull objects dynamically from the public cloud provider. So we have it in here. We have like 3,364 available filters. We can uh, also inspect them, what we have available. So, and if we are going to the address object, for example, Azure SQL, and we want to define a policy in which we allow access from a server to Azure SQL, 
we can simply use this object. We have here a filter which uh, filtered the whole Azure SQL to the region of West Europe. And also the service tag uh, SQL. This means all the SQL instance IPs which Microsoft is using are dynamically updated within that object. We can also view the matched IP addresses which um, have been gained through this connector um, via this matched address list. You can see this our whole object, uh, whole sub subnets. You can also use then this object. Uh, sorry for that. Here are the policies. Uh, within within those policies, for example, we have here backend servers, for example, every server which is tag type web server um, can access the Azure SQL in West Europe, for, for example. Very easy one. And yes, this would be the conclusion of the first demo. And I now give back to Philip. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, um, uh, Adrien. So uh, I need to let me share my screen. So yeah, so I think this this, this just was an example of, um, of how you can use the templates that we have. And uh, you know, from GitHub, and as uh, Adrien was was just sharing, then you you can write a few few piece of code to deploy uh, your your template into um, HA into uh, auto scaling uh, groups. Uh, you can enable um, uh, you can deploy the security rules automatically, as Adrien was was sharing uh, right now. You can leverage uh, obviously uh, Flex VM. Which is uh, our uh, license paper use as code? Um, I would say uh, licensing schema. Uh, by the way, Flex VM is available not only on public cloud; it's available also on uh, Nutanix, on uh, VMware. So, if you have customers with, uh, I would say, a critical mass of uh, 40 gate, 40 web VMs. There's a great benefit to uh, leverage Flex VM uh, in order to be invoiced on a per day of consumption. So it's a really, uh, um, I would say, an attractive licensing mechanism because it's not uh, it's not just prepaid uh, for the whole duration. It's really consumed per day. So this is um, this is a great uh, mechanism. And as um, Adrien was was just showing, you you have access to the portal. So where the, your customer or yourself will have visibility on the, the, the daily consumption, the credits left. Uh, you can see, uh, you can deploy a new license. You can create a new license and obviously deploy it into your VMs. You can view all the licenses uh, which are active or stopped um, into your, your, all your virtual machine, 40 gate, 40 web. And then uh, you can also uh, start and stop the license, yeah, as you wish, uh, from the portal. But not only that, but what Adrien shared just before is that uh, you can leverage the REST APIs. And whenever you deploy a 40 gate VM or a 40 web VM as code, whenever you push the, the policies, yeah, through the, 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 the Ansible or Terraform scripts, then you can also leverage the um, the FlexVM APIs to create and publish a new license or stop the, the license on the running VM. Yeah, so there's really um, a lot of flexibility to automate not only the, the 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 security rules deployment and config, but also the the licensing. Yeah, so it's quite nice, and uh, and obviously uh, what Adrien has uh, shared right now is is. Um, how to how to create yeah this um, uh, through a set of, uh, of of code how to configure your security rules into um, into a, a new uh, environment here Azure so that you can make it flexible and dynamic against the uh, Azure um, uh, subnets uh, VM uh, applications so you can really create that automation that is completely um, I would say. Um, 
adapted and integrated with the target cloud environment, being VMware, being Azure or AWS, Google. Yeah. So there's really a, a great um, opportunity. Something here, which also is a, is a helper for you as a partner to get started, is this uh, API preview feature, uh, which is available on the, on the FortiGate uh, portal. Uh, that is really a, a nice feature for you whenever you start into programming security as code, you don't want to start from scratch. So you will do an action. So here you would say you will change uh, an IP address on a, on a policy. Um, and then you can click on API preview and then it, you will see the code, yeah? So you will see the code associated to the entire action or the delta versus what you have done into the, into the, 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 the console, uh, the delta change, yeah? So then you can cut and paste the, this code, uh, which is a JSON code and, and take it into your library so that you create your own uh, library of, of code and, and further automation. And also you can edit in CLI so you can execute the, the code which was generated directly. So you can test and, and, and validate uh, that it works fine, yeah? So this is really a, a way for you to get started. So you don't have to really just start from scratch into the, the libraries of Terraform and Ansible. You can also create your own logic from the portal, get the code, store the code, create your libraries and execute it, test it, and then you have yeah, you have security as code. Yeah, I would say this, that is some already something which is a, which is a good starting point. Something which is also key, and we will go uh, through this is um, whenever you create security as code, you, you're not constrained by the uh, Fortinet uh, Fabric ecosystem, even though it's it's already quite uh, rich. You can also create your security as code for very large uh, ecosystem, which is available through the either the APIs, we've seen like FlexVM or Splunk, where you can log anything you, you want to do into Splunk, or the SDN connector, yeah? Uh, actually, Adrien just shared the SDN connector to Azure. Uh, that's the same for AWS. Uh, we have SDN connector on Kubernetes, so we will discuss and share that into the second part of the session for container security. But you can do that also on, uh, on, on VMware, on Oracle, on Google Cloud. So you can really create the script that will deploy the same security policy into AWS or uh, Azure Cloud. And, and that is a huge value for your customer. And this is something you should really uh, share. Yeah, you can demo to your customer how they can consistently and uh, automatically deploy security rules and policies to Azure and AWS so they can create a multi-cloud consistent security posture, which is quite key for their success into the digital acceleration. Obviously, we will talk about DevOps into the second part of this uh, session. And then you can also uh, have that extended um, ecosystem, yeah? Uh, so you can pilot the entire uh, fabric, uh, switching, wireless, NAC, uh, firewalling, 40 web, uh, 40 analyzer, 40 SIM. So you have really, um, obviously, 40 uh, EDR, uh, NDR. So you have all of that capability. So you also can, as a partner, demonstrate how you can automate for your customer uh, into the fabric ecosystem and, and larger framework yeah so this is also something we can help you with so if you have if you want to do something for your customer and you want to automate uh, within the fabric with different solutions the the settings and the deployment of security rules and response and you want to do this into a broader ecosystem let's say with Splunk and, and azure uh, yeah, just just raise your hand, uh, ask for support, and we can we can have a, a specific workshop and and work with you to discuss and enable that. Yeah. Okay. So this is really something I wanted to share. Obviously, uh, your automation scripting can go a bit beyond into the cloud integration. So, for example, if your customer wants to log into Sentinel into into Azure then you can automate this logging from 40 gate VMs into Sentinel and you can launch uh, cloud functions as your cloud functions from 40 manager or even from 40 gate as a response. So you have really the, the capability also to 
create the code which will um, leverage the network construct of the cloud provider. And for example, if, if the customer, if your customer wants to go with Azure V1 or Azure Express Route or you know, any Azure network construct, then you can also automate the settings of that through, uh, through code, uh, working through the, the, the libraries you have seen. Yeah? So this is something you, you really want to consider so that you don't let your customer do alone uh, this work and you can really assist them, consult and sell additional services into this automation. Okay. Um, so Adria was showing briefly the, the SDN connector. <clears throat> How to configure a, an external connector is, is really simple. You, you do it from the FortiGate console. Just select the, the connector, you, you give the credentials and then you you can start obviously um, automating into Azure, into AWS. So you do it here, yeah, from, from that menu. So it's it's really uh, obviously something you have to do, yeah, but that, that's that's quite simple. And you can do it across a large ecosystem as, as you have seen here, yeah. Uh, that is the, the, the menu item to just uh, configure the, yeah, the, the status, the uh, update interval, and then the, the the region where you're connecting to with the subscription ID and the resource groups that you get from, from Azure. Uh, yeah, we, we talked briefly about the, the Terraform uh, libraries. So we, we, we are clearly a Terraform provider. So you can get uh, the, the latest uh, material here from this uh, provider. And we are also an Ansible uh, provider. You can find a lot of our modules into Galaxy uh, here. Um, on top of what Adrien was, was sharing with you, which is uh, our, our demo environment, you can get a lot of additional um, uh, scripts and, uh, and, and, and code for Fortinet uh, into that Galaxy um, uh, repository. So you will have the links again, check, uh, test it, try to use it. If anything, uh, is, if anything is not working or if you need support, uh, happy to assist, yeah. So we, we've gone through the, the demo number one, which Adrien just uh, shared briefly uh, about uh, deploying, automating the license uh, key generation and, and using it. Now we'll talk briefly about the, um, the automation into the incident response, which is maybe key because your customer don't want to monitor themselves 24 by seven to, to detect and uh, protect themselves. So this is really the, 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 the major aspects and benefits about automation. So we'll, we'll share with you what can be done with Fortinet, uh, with FortiGate, without going into uh, 40, uh, 40 SIM and 40 Analyzer. And you can always in, improve a lot and automate further with uh, uh, SOAR and, um, and knock and sock solutions. But here, this is just what can be done already as code using FortiGate, yeah? And, and there's quite a lot. And we will explain to you that, and then we will uh, look into the, the, the bigger framework. So let me get started. So the, the thing here is obviously um, your customer are, are exposed, uh, you know, in, into a more aggressive and, and more uh, moving uh, threat um, I would say freight uh, domain because of the, um, uh, I would say the, 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 the ecosystem is using AI to generate attack now. And, and, and there's, there's really also industrializing the, uh, the attacks by the, the attack chain and, and the number of players that are you know, also um, uh, into the attack chain. So you really want to leverage uh, the full 40 gate and Fortinet uh, you know, capabilities to automate your protection and improve your protection. And obviously here, um, uh, the first thing that you want to help your customer with is subscribe to the FortiGuard Labs, um, uh, I would say support and, and automate the, uh, the, the, as much as possible, the daily updates into the, the FortiGuard updates, yeah? So this, this is really the, I would say the, the starting point about threat protection before we even automate further. And that applies obviously to network protection, to web protection, to content security, device security, 
So 40 guard is, is really spread across the whole fabric. So this is really the, the, the first action you have to enable, I would say, into, your, into, the, um, into the ecosystem. But the second thing you want to look into is how to automate the response and how to automate the, 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 the incident uh, you know, response is by leveraging the automation stitches. So the automation stitches are available into the, the 40 gate uh, console uh, as, a, as a menu item. And uh, this is where you will leverage um, different trigger being any event that can happen. Be, you know, could be something we'll, we'll look into, but it can be um, a, a, an admin user who is logging multiple times and there is a failure in logging. It can be a, comprom a compromised host. It can be... A, uh, communication coming from a, a port which is not expected. So, so whatever you want to define as a trigger, this is something that you can uh, also configure from a broader ecosystem. It's not only 48, yeah? It can be an event happening in Azure, for example. Then you define an action and that action can be uh, within uh, 48 VM, can be uh, within the fabric, so any of the Fortinet solution, or it can be also within third-party provider, so solutions, security solutions, yeah? So that is really the first thing you want to consider is, is create this automation stitch. And, and really, um, you will improve a lot your customer uh, level of protection if you do this. So let, let me illustrate a little bit. So you come here into the Fortigate uh, menu, you, you click into automation, and then you, you see here all the, the possible um, uh, trigger or events that you can um, select and, and create the automation stitch from, yeah? So for example, a compromised host or um, uh, HA failover or uh, a conflict change on a, on a faulty gate, uh, yeah? Or, or you have uh, also a webhook. A webhook is... Uh, Something that happens into a third party external solution can be Splunk, can be Azure, yeah, and anything. So you will select that source of the, of the trigger uh, of that automation stitch. And then you will uh, select the action. The action can be an IP ban, uh, it can be, uh, you know, uh, uh, notifying. You can trigger a Slack notification or log something into Splunk or uh, trigger an Azure function. Yeah, so, or, or trigger a script, a CLI script, which is custom that you can create and store into the library. So you have uh, quite a large a set of, um, of, uh, of actions which are predefined into the, into the automation uh, uh, menu that you see here. And you can also do that on uh, VMware, uh, NSX, for example. Uh, that is quite interesting, yeah? So it's not just public cloud, by the way. So once you define your actions for that uh, initial um, you know, event or incident, then um, obviously you can trigger, you can uh, generate the code, you can generate the JSON code, uh, and then you can execute yeah the the the, the stitch yeah um, so here for example uh, we will log uh, some uh, events which will be a bad login so the the trigger here is there is a login error of a, an admin um, into 40 gate we will log that event uh, as a webhook into into here you see it can be a log server or it can be Splunk, whatever. The webhook is a function to trigger something external to the fabric. So here you will, um, every time there is a logging error into uh, the 48 console, then you will trigger a webhook that will log that event to, to something else, yeah, being let's say Splunk, if the customer is using Splunk or, or, or 40 sim, if he's using 40 sim. And then obviously that log will trigger something else, yeah? So that's just an example of what can be done, um, you know, to, to make sure there is control uh, and automation into event uh, and, and detections, yeah? 
Okay, so we really uh, encourage that you test the automation stitches and, and you know, uh, play with it as much as possible and you can really improve a lot your customer uh, reaction to, to risks, I would say. So here it's another example of what you can do by uh, notifying of that uh, uh, event uh, by uh, logging into, into Slack and using the, the webhook again. And the webhook is really, if anything happens, then I trigger the webhook. And, and the webhook, you can create as many webhooks you want to this external ecosystem. Here it's going to be in, in, in Slack, yeah? So you can really create something which is quite interesting. Then you have a menu where you see all your automation stitches. And obviously you click on the automation stitch, you see the, the, the stream, you know what happens. And then you can update it and you can replicate and you can create that, that automation stitch. You can enable, disable. So you can really uh, use that menu, which is in Fortigate console. And you can obviously get the code and you can maintain that as code as you want, yeah, which is quite interesting. So let's take another example of what could be done into that automation. Uh, something which is really interesting is um, you, you don't want the automation to be IP address specific, especially if the customer is using public cloud. If they have, for example, several machines into Azure, into different vNets, uh, and you have a Fortigate vNet, uh, uh, which is our uh, Fortigate, um, let's say, a security hub, yeah, which is managing and filtering the traffic to the different vNet through vNet peering. You, you don't want to create uh, uh, policies which are IP specific. So then what you can do is you will tag the, the, the VMs, uh, let's say here with uh, different tags, department, zone, region. You will tag the VMs, then you will create um, some security rules and policies against the tags into the forty gates. Yeah, and, and then uh, you can create automation stitches against these dynamic objects into Azure, for example, so that against tags again, yeah. So that, for example, you will use the tag uh, compute type equal web server. So then you have a rule for every web server which runs into that um, into this VNet, and you can create a policy which will apply to all the VMs which are type web server. So if anything happens into Azure and there is a failover and all the VMs have to be moved to another region, uh, then all the security rules will apply uh, and, and you don't have to redevelop or configure anything about IP address and ports and anything. Uh, the security rules that you have defined for your customer will be generic enough that they apply to all the web server wherever they are in any region. And then that can be obviously automated further so that uh, if someone creates a new web server uh, into that um, as your landing zone, then automatically the security rules will apply. So you don't have to reconfigure anything again, yeah? So this is really the, the value of this, um, of this uh, automation workflow. As you, if you use tagging, if you use dynamic objects, if you use uh, the automation stitches and security as code with webhooks to trigger something external, uh, you can update the, the, the route table dynamically. You can uh, update the security rules and policies to anything being triggered by the application owner uh, into this uh, landing zone. Uh, and then you can create a, a real automation process, a real automation workflow that will, um, yeah, that will enable your customer to be protected automatically anything happens on Azure, anything happens on VMware. So you have this, this logic, yeah, which is um, not only automated within Fortinet, but also uh, integrated within the customer environment if they use Plunk, if they use uh, any other third party solution. All right, so I hope I, I explained a bit uh, the benefits and, and, and mechanisms. I will hand over to you now, um, Adrien, so you can make it more specific and you know visualize a bit the, the 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 opportunity here thanks a lot philip welcome back so i will share my screen again you should be able to see it yeah, now good 
perfect. So we are back on the deployed 40 gate, which we saw before. So as Philip explained, we have here on the automation part, we have different stitches we can define. We can define triggers, actions. We can define triggers in, on almost everything, even on the 40 analyzer event handlers, for example, uh, or also simply for a, for a, an event lock in 40 gate, for example, I'm doing it at home where if I'm detecting a rogue AP, I will then fulfill several tasks. Um, this is a very simple one. And we, we or our team, especially from the US created um, a blog post in here um, to create some kind of micro segmentation. So we configured this as well within that template. So, and what is this whole um, automation stitch doing? In the end, we have here an automation stitch and the trigger is simply set to, hey, tell me when a dynamic address is being added or removed um, based on the STN connector we have. And then filter if the object is within the address object of the 40 gate backend. So what does it mean? Backend, what is backend? So let's go to the addresses and look into the backend address object. And we see it is a dynamic object, which will be pulled from the Azure STM connector. And we are filtering here VMs with a tag type web server. If we go to the Azure portal, we have here a Linux VM available. Let's have a look into the tags of this VM. We see here we have a tag type or we have a tag with the name type web server. And this VM has the IP address of 172.16.137.4. Okay, let's go back to the 40 gate. See the matched address. It's exactly this VM which we have deployed. Now, we, we have seen in the event logs or the 40 gate has seen in the event log that this IP has been added or the tag has been added to the VM and then this IP has, to be, uh, has been added to the address object by the 40 gate. So we are trigger an event based on that. Um, let's go back to the automation stitch. We are triggering an event based on that. And what do we do with that? Okay, we have the RT action. What is the RT action? The RT action is basically a webhook which we trigger from Azure. And we set the next hop of this um, of this VM which we have detected or which within that IP as next hop to the 40 gate. So this means this gives us a very dynamic environment. So if we have multiple clusters or multiple VMs, 40 gate VMs, appliances or subscriptions or, or different teams which handling different um, applications or, or whole, whole uh, automation or application groups, we can then simply apply automatically a next hop for this VMs based on just their tag on Azure. So we have this webhook here. We have created an automation user account on the Azure portal. And we see 
here that the webhook data, which is being pushed from the body gate. And we see here if we have any errors, warnings, and we can also review the whole output. It's a very simple use case, but in my opinion, it's a very efficient one. It gives us a lot of flexibility. And yes, in the end, you don't have to maintain all this uh, route configurations anymore since we have automated this step within that automation stage. So if you want to try it by yourself, feel free. I will post that link um, into the chat. And also there's a GitHub repository afterwards, um, which guides you step-by-step step how to deploy um, the whole environment, how to prepare it, how to generate the automation account, etc. cetera, import the modules in there, you know, all the steps. And you can use it. So I will post this blog, uh, I will, yeah, post or send you the blog post within the chat. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. So this was it from demo. Thanks back to Philip. Yeah, that's great, uh, Adrian. That's really nice to, um, to, to, to illustrate, yeah, the, this, uh, this workflow. And, and I think this is something, um, really uh, that Fortinet has invested quite a lot of um, you know, uh, work. And this is a key differentiator for you as a partner, if you compare to other security provider, that um, opportunities that, that you have to automate, to uh, integrate with the cloud provider, with VMware, and to really create automation for the incident response. Uh, without uh, even investing into a huge, uh, hugely costly SOC and NOC uh, uh, tooling, yeah, this is really unique, and you should really demonstrate that to your customer. You should demonstrate the value, and you should really um, uh, use the template that Adrian just uh, shared to to create your own demo platform and uh, and and just uh, showcase, yeah. And again, we are really happy to to assist and really happy to to help you into that, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, we, we covered item one into our agenda. So security automation and security as code. Next, we'll talk about container protection, container security, DevSecOps, CI CD pipeline, and we'll go a little bit into uh, agenda item number two, I would say. So let, let's pause for questions right now. Do you have any question, anything on what has been uh, shared? Uh, any, any, um, yeah, uh, I think there is one. So uh, maybe that question is, uh, is for you, Adrian, because this is about uh, how to manage password keys. Uh, uh, do you see the question also? Yes, just reading it at the moment. So give me a second. Mm. No, we have, I, I guess you're referring to the principle of not doing something twice or not have like replicated data um, on different systems. Is that correct? Uh, I mean, we have the whole source and the whole code on the GitHub repository and we're using the Ansible cloud to, to, to store the store the actual states of the deployment. But the passwords, the hidden values, etc, these are being stored within uh, GitHub here. So GitHub has that uh, capability to store the, the hidden values or secrets in there. Does this answer the question? I'm not sure. So uh, otherwise we can also unmute you. Um, I guess we have that capability, right, Woody? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I will do that. One moment. So 
Okay, yeah. can you hear me? Yeah, we can yeah. hear you now. Yeah. Oh, first, thank you very much. Um, so yes, exactly. Um, I'm just um, quite there with a, with a question that I've been um, asking myself on other deployments as well, is that um, if you have a automated system um, where you deploy multiple systems and you need somehow, you need a system uh, where you're get the values, you mean you need the, the like the, my password or a username, just a value from the database. And of course, this database is very, uh, needs to be very secure. And how, first of all, how do you secure that part and how do you make it reliable? If it's not available, um, how do you work with that? Um, I mean, you can, as I said, we have stored it in that example here uh, within the secrets part of the GitHub. Um, what you can also do, for example, is to script and get the value, for example, from Azure Key Vault um, or, or, or similar by AWS, et cetera, um, and store the secrets uh, and the dynamic object, which uh, should be private in there as well. This is also a um, possibility, but uh, in the end, this is scripting, which you need to do, and you need to uh, ensure that these are safe or like uh, how you can get this within the script, but in the end, you're free to use uh, any kind of uh, any kind of service which is available from that this And if you use the, the webhook, by the way, if you use the webhook into the, 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 the FortiGate console, you're, you're into a secure environment, yeah, already. So you don't need to store anything else anywhere, yeah. I think that that, that type of capability is within the, the FortiGate uh, framework in a way, yeah. That, that's, that's my understanding also, yeah. Okay, yeah, I understand, I understand where you're going. Uh, um... Uh, one part also that that uh, gives me a little bit of a thinking is um, you kick as as far as we go with automation. You have multiple systems that can automate or trigger stuff by retrieving information from other automating devices, and and by that uh, you can store information on multiple devices and make uh, yeah like you make it like, like a round trip or or. Um, um yeah it's it's kind of where um where do you trigger or how you do design the automation process as a whole as a big picture yeah i think you're you it's it's you know you're back to the design phase yeah it's it's a really good question um i think you know what is important here is is that you uh, work with your customer to define you know where do i define and store my security rules my security policy is the placeholder faulty manager and then i i is faulty manager is uh, really um, driving automation across the large ecosystem or is the the placeholder you know my uh, ansible libraries and that they, they are protected yeah and then i use that into uh, into my different uh, ecosystem so yeah i, I think the, the fundamental question is how you want to structure and how you want to um, uh, manage your automation. I think that that's really the design aspect, yeah? Uh, then the security of it is, is really, I mean, you know, uh, securing the password and, and the secrets is, is just uh, is underlying, but you really need to, to define with your customer what's the master in a way into that automation. I think that that's where your question goes into, yeah? Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, because I, I, you're right. You don't want to have automation everywhere spread into each product. And that's, by the way, one of the main issue customers who start automation face is they automate into Splunk, they automate into FortiGate, they automate into, uh, you know, uh, into Azure, they automate everywhere. And then there is no central logic and repository and, and it's becoming a mess again and, and it's not working. Yeah. So you really have to educate your customer that um, automation is to be defined and managed and um, programmed centrally. It cannot be distributed across different tools. I mean, that's even though each different tools may have this automation capability, it doesn't work. You really have to make it a top down. And, and this is really why I started by this design aspect. Yeah. 
Oh, okay, I get it. I make yeah. the circle. Thank you. Yeah, but, but it's a really good point because we've seen that trend also. And, you know, Azure has great automation capability. Let's use it. Well, okay, great. But then you have things all over and it's starting to become uh, non-manageable again. Yeah. Okay, it was a great question. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so let, what I propose is let's do a small uh, bio break uh, before we go to, um, to uh, item number two. Let, let's come back in five minutes uh, at 10.20, and then we go into the um, uh, what Fortinet can propose into the container application development, uh, scanning, uh, container security aspects, yeah? Uh, we will go fast into this one, uh, but this is quite interesting. So uh, I welcome you back in, in five minutes, yeah, at uh, 10.20. And if you have more questions, uh, feel free to reach out afterwards as well. We can have a chat one-to-one. Uh, -one. So no issue at all. Yeah, thank you, Adrian. <clears throat> Thanks to all. Thanks. See you okay. in, uh, in four minutes now.
good. So I think we are, we are getting back uh, to continue the presentation. I wait for a minute for um, Rudy and Adrien to, to come back and then we can continue. Um, we discussed uh, briefly, as I said, about um, uh, security as code, security automation. And now we will uh, go through the, um, uh, yeah, more about uh, the agile uh, development, uh, cloud, um, uh, cloud security. So welcome back. Uh, thanks for joining and um, let's continue the, the presentation. So we, we have uh, Fortinet is again, not very well known for container security, native application uh, development. We have been uh, evolving recently and uh, there's uh, several solutions that we would like to share with you today. Uh, that is obviously a very dynamic environment. We are, uh, our solutions are also, um, I would say evolving fast and uh, happy to uh, spend more time as you, um, as you wish on, on this, yeah? So let's get started again. Let me go into slide show um, as much as I can, all right. And welcome back. So let's talk about um, uh, security as code and, um, and how to protect container, how to protect serverless and how to help um, application developer uh, shift security left, uh, as uh, we say, yeah, it's the fashionable world. So uh, what is about container and, and container security? Um, so first, um, uh, the same as, uh, as uh, networking and uh, applications, container needs to be protected. There is no default container security, it doesn't exist. And um, uh, the, the container has something very specific is that uh, they, they may be ephemeral, yeah? So they, they don't, uh, they, they are not existing as a static object. <clears throat> and as such, uh, the protection and the security needs to be dynamic also. And it's a, it's a pipeline. It's, um, it's really something that has to be done as code, yeah? You cannot declare and manage uh, container security by the, the same way as, as um, you do on network security. So the, the, the tools and the solutions which you know, are being used are most of the time not adapted, not sufficient. So that's why we evolved also our solution within Fortinet to um, enable container security. What's unique about the Fortinet strategy is we are not um, selling and we are not telling customers through, through you as a partner to purchase the, the new fancy solution for container dedicated security. You can protect container with FortiGate, FortiWeb. Uh, you know, uh, you don't have to sell something exotic again, which is not integrated, which is uh, specific and just focused on container security. So that is really, the objective here is to share with you and demonstrate to, to you how you can use the products you know to protect container and help customer um, shift left with the same solution. And that is really um, quite key. And that's the main value you want to play and you want to discuss with your customer. Okay, so uh, if we look into the, the, the container threat model, so you, you will see that into uh, the, the different, uh, you know, um, uh, blogs that are listed here. Customers have to, you know, uh, protect eight uh, vulnerabilities or threats, possible threats on container. And um, that is uh, the, the container library, the intrinsic container security that can be, uh, you know, the, 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 the management, so the, 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 the master nodes, yeah, the management platform, which can be uh, attacked. It can be the container image or registry. It can be also um, obviously the, the, the secrets that can be exposed on, on container and it can be, uh, so you, you have here the, the different, you know, um, uh, I would say uh, uh, potential risks, yeah, that you have to manage. And obviously any container security solution is to address these eight risks uh, against the, the Mitre uh, attack schema. So what is this uh, security approach for, for container? So obviously, um, you have to protect the overall infrastructure. Then you have to contain to protect uh, the uh, container image. Yeah, 
uh, and scan for vulnerabilities into the image because a, a lot of containers uh, developers are using existing uh, existing um, code yeah libraries and they most of the time developers are, are leveraging existing piece of code so that's something to be scanned and assessed for any risk yeah and then you need to protect the the the, the networking uh, north south to access to the application running container but east west so you can protect the communication between pods and this is quite key and this is new into the the security area that east west traffic protection on the container and um, uh, obviously um, uh, at uh, ephemeral uh, level is something really key and you have to select tools that protect against one two and three on the eight uh, point of risk so you need something which is as we say a solid foundation so what we recommend uh, and what you can discuss with your customer is to use uh, 40 gate and 40 web container format as a way to protect the traffic north south to the to the, the container uh, to the nodes but also use um, 40 web and 40 gate to protect the traffic uh, east west between the nodes between the pods yeah so uh, you can use uh, 40 gate vm uh, as you see through the load balancer on, on azure on google uh, dependent on uh, what the customer is using as their kubernetes um, cluster uh, you can protect the, the kubernetes management through 40 gate then you protect the, 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 the nodes traffic north south through 40 gate, and then you protect the HTTP traffic uh, north south through 40 web container edition. And then you protect obviously the, the, the east west traffic through the, the 40 gate VM also. So, in a way, you can use as a reference architecture, uh, you know. Um, 40 gate and 40 web to to enable the full end-to-end -end, uh, dynamic uh, security of the of the nodes of the pods and you don't need to to really go with anything exotic as i said as an additional uh, third-party solution to do this you will find uh, all this reference architecture how to deploy 40 gate how to configure 40 web for um, uh, container protection you will find that into github so we'll share the links and uh, this is something which has been um, uh, already deployed uh, many times and, and uh, experienced by our uh, advanced, um, I would say, uh, security as code team. So just a quick example, for example, on Azure. <clears throat> so you would obviously um, create uh, the, the um, uh, security hub with the, the 40 gate or a pair of 40 gate behind an Azure load balancer. Uh, then um, the Kubernetes master will uh, connect through cloud connector and through APIs to the 40 gate. You know, remember in the previous presentation, we have SDN connector uh, for uh, Kubernetes into the 40 gate uh, console. So you will activate the SDN connector for Kubernetes here and then uh, the traffic through the, from the kubernetes manager to the the nodes uh, will be obviously protected through the pair of 40 gate vms running on azure and then you have the application traffic so here you have the management traffic yeah and then you have the application traffic which will come through the load balancer in azure to the pair of 40 gate to the, the 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 vnets through vnet peering and then you will protect the traffic through the nodes and then you will disable the traffic node to node so that the the, the east west traffic can be filtered through the 40 gate um, so that is the the the, the proposal and uh, the kubernetes connector map the ip to the kubernetes objects you know for ports uh, nodes and the um, egress uh, traffic control is managed also by the, the 40 gate. So this is just a, an example of, um, of uh, east-west and north-south uh, deployment on, on Azure. Uh, and, and really, this is something you can get from GitHub and you can propose to your customer and you leverage, obviously, the, the protection from 40 gate, 40 guard, 
and, and uh, this is also applicable to Kubernetes cluster. So um, again, here the, the same with uh, with Docker and uh, and and uh, how you can manage uh, the Docker image uh, security and um, how you can uh, protect pods. So it's a bit of the same. Um, the, the same uh, architecture, but here you will protect on top the uh, Docker image. So the Docker image um, to leverage a Docker image and, um, and, and to, I would say, publish, then you will go through the traffic through the faulty gate. And then you can also secure the management traffic and the application traffic to the different pods. Uh, so that is a, more or less uh, the same as, as before, but also applicable to the Docker image and Docker containers that you see here with the, the cublet and the cub proxy. So you can leverage this, um, this security end-to-end -end also using Docker and Kubernetes. We have the, the connector for both. Uh, in, in this uh, high-level architecture here, uh, you see uh, the fact that we can use faulty web, faulty web as an ingress controller and API protection, we call it WAP. And this is also applicable for container traffic. So in, in that design, yeah, you can use uh, faulty gate and faulty web. And uh, faulty gate will protect the, um, the master APIs, the pod to pod traffic and the egress traffic uh, going out. And then you will use uh, faulty web for the um, ingress controller and uh, API protection to the, the nodes, yeah? So this is uh, again, you know, quite simple when you look at it. We have the template, you can use that and you can explain your customer how to protect a container uh, into a dynamic environment using the fabric, as simple as that, yeah. Image filtering, the same way you can use, uh, I, was, I was already, you know, um, uh, describing that by the, the Docker pull and push. Uh, you can also manage the traffic through the 40 gate VMs and scan uh, the, 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 obviously the, the traffic on, the, on Docker registries so that it's, it's visible here, uh, as you see on application control for the 40 gate into the console. So you can really view this uh, uh, and, and set, set up the, the security for, uh, for that uh, application use, yeah? So this is available in, into the 40 gate menu. So if you look at container security, um, obviously you have to look into one, two, and three, as we said. So 40 gate, 40 web are the key solutions, but we have, as we have the SDN connector, you can also use uh, uh, 40 deceptor to get full visibility end to end on uh, container traffic. So 40 deceptor is really quite interesting because you will get, um, uh, yeah, you will you will, you have uh, risk assessment, compliance assessment, full visibility on uh, container traffic, north south east west, lateral movement, and you can uh, have threat detection uh, configured there. You can use 40 sim to log your container traffic and, and, uh, and get visibility on this. You can also obviously use 40 analyzer. So as we have as the end connector on, um, on Kubernetes, on Docker, you can really have the full uh, config. And then we will speak briefly about 40 CWP for container scanning, image scanning and uh, assessment of the, uh, the, 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 the risks yeah, on container uh, activity. So I will demo CWP in a minute. But just so you know, our solutions are enabled for container security. Uh, you just have to use the SDN connector and configure the, 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 the logic uh, into 40 gate, 40, um, 40 web, etc. And the way you activate the connector is again, uh, you go into the 40 gate console, you uh, go into five fabric connector, you activate the Kubernetes uh, manage or private um, SDN connector, and then you configure the, the, the credentials uh, right there. Okay, so yeah, so again, as we say, nothing really um, specific. You just use 48, 40 web, uh, and then you can configure it against a predefined architecture, leveraging the SDN connector. And then you can help your customer secure the container traffic and the container registries. So this is really um, quite key 
don't sell anything uh, really uh, different or additional. Uh, use what the customer has already. I think this is really key, I would say, for their security. Yeah. So now uh, I, will, I will speak briefly about container visibility and container security management um, and how you can help your customer visualize their container security, assess the container security, and then uh, manage it over time. So the, the solution that we propose here is 40 CWP, which is Cloud Workload Protection. That is a cloud visibility solution, which is doing risk management, risk assessment, uh, assessing the data security, monitoring threats uh, and, uh, and compliance, and obviously reporting traffic uh, and any risks on the traffic. So that platform, uh, let me uh, go to it, is uh, right there. It, it is a SaaS platform, which is available on 40 Cloud Portal. Uh, you can, you, if you know 40 Cloud, you can get it uh, right here. Yeah. Uh, so 40 CASB is our solution for uh, SaaS uh, visibility, and 40 CWP is our solution for YAS uh, visibility and for container security. Okay. So you come into 40 CWP. Uh, you will uh, configure obviously CWP for all your your cloud uh, environments. And you would see obviously what are the, the risks and um, exposure on, um, on the different uh, YAS, being virtual machine, being storage, being blob storage, or being S3 buckets or whatever. Yeah. So that is CWP. So if you're interested by this, I'm happy to um, help you. By the way, um, CWP is available um, uh, for free for all the expert. Uh, an advanced partner, so you can use it to uh, create your own security assessment service for your customer. Uh, we can give you the license; it's for free, so don't hesitate. Yeah, it's it's really something you should uh, capitalize and leverage, and then you can create your own assessment, risk assessment, consulting service for your customer. There's no cost. Yeah. Okay, so that is the, 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 the entry menu. And then you can select the, the container protection uh, menu here. Yeah. And when you go into the container protection, well, obviously, you have to uh, log in again because I, uh, I uh, expired. Philip, are you sharing a demo? Uh, I'm supposed to share a demo, but let me okay. stop sharing and start again. You you have yep. not seen anything from the... the, the yeah. Oh, gee. <laughs> we have only seen the 40 CVP, uh, ah, okay. CWP. All right, yeah. you've seen the slides, though. Yeah, you've seen the slides. <laughs> yes. Okay, good. It's yep. not so bad, yeah? Thank you, Rudy. Yeah. So, yeah, I was obviously... Do you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's okay. Perfect. So here you, I was just explaining that 40 CWP is for cloud uh, security assessment. And that is the main menu when you come into the 40 CWP and you can drill into the, the risks that are being identified on, on public cloud. And this tool is the one that you can use for free to create your security assessment service for your customer. Yeah. But on top of this, uh, you can uh, go to container protection, uh, which is an add-on. And here, uh, there is obviously you configure uh, your, 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 your uh, registry and Kubernetes cluster. You just configure that into 40 CWP. And then um, 40 CWP will scan uh, it can be every five minutes. You you define yeah the the scan uh, the, the scan frequency. <clears throat> it will scan the the container registry. It will scan the container image, and then it will obviously risk the uh, uh, list the, the the vulnerabilities which are found uh, wherever you have a Kubernetes cluster which are not compliant to the best practice security design. And then what are what are the risk score? So you can drill into the, the, the top uh, risks and then uh, you can obviously uh, understand what is your exposure for each of these, uh, uh, I would say, uh, score here. And then you can understand what is the exposure, where it is, into which image. Uh, 
uh, what is the distri, you know, the OS uh, distri, uh, what is the, um, the version, the tag, and then you can uh, obviously against the CVE ID, you can take actions uh, to uh, understand, yeah, what is the exposure and how to remediate to it, yeah. So you can really, uh, so for example, here, if I click into the details, you understand that this is a, an Apache log uh, 4G exposure, which is quite uh, important for your customer. Uh, and then you, you can see where to fix it, yeah, uh, which uh, package you have to deploy uh, based on the OS uh, distro um, distry to, uh, to to remediate, and and this this is quite I would say um, uh, key for your customer. Any customer using a container into production, you you really want to have this visibility. You really want to have an assessment uh, ongoing, yeah, and you really want also not only to check your risks and vulnerabilities on container, but you really want also to test the compliance. Yeah, you really want to understand, am I compliant against, uh, against the best practice design, against the, the EKS, you know, benchmark, against the, the Google, you know, Kubernetes um, benchmark. So you can really review also the, the compliance assessment uh, on top of the risk assessment. Yeah. So uh, that that is um, yeah that is quite interesting and I uh, again this is for free for the the, the 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 partner and if you want to use it for free you just have to pass uh, if you're not an expert or uh, you just have to uh, pass the NSC six cloud certification so we can uh, also uh, give it to you yeah in a way okay so this is just to give you a, a high level overview about our container, about our cloud security uh, assessment platform, which is called 40CWP, and the container uh, edition, which uh, helps you uh, within the development uh, pipeline, helps you assess any vulnerabilities, risks into the deploy phase, into the build phase, and also into the run phase, yeah? Uh, so this is really key because then you can scan the, com the container. You can scan for risk and compliance ongoing with the frequency you want. And there is obviously a, a great uh, value uh, because you can also uh, take actions on each vulnerability. You can stop the, the, the container whenever there is a, a problem, and then you can uh, take actions right away, re real time, yeah? Uh, we we have some limited auto remediation. Um, the intent of CWP is not to automate remediation compared to pot potential um, competitive alternative solutions. Uh, we are focused really into um, into detection, uh, 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 we say reporting. Just so you know, 40 CWP is evolving. Uh, we, we are going to have a new version into the April timeframe and we will provide workflow to you as a partner to remediate, yeah? So we are going to help uh, a lot into the central uh, reactions on incidents. So it's coming into the April, May uh, next release. So that is an evolution, which is quite key. Okay, so then you see obviously the pod communication, the inter pod communication, the traffic, the risks, the assessment on, on that. So you can configure all this also into 40 CWP. Uh, you, you, you get it as a, as a, as a product, as an add on on the Container Guardian. Uh, you subscribe it per, per host, per nodes. And then you have, um, uh, yeah, you have it for um, uh, for a given SKU one, three, or five years. Okay, so that is one of the solution I wanted to share with you. And again, you can use it for free if if uh, if you are uh, uh, an expert or advanced partner. The second thing here is about uh, protect modern application de development. So this is about the, the pipeline. Yeah, this is about um, uh, developing applications into into cloud, uh, most likely using uh, the, 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 the serverless, the, the, the container, cloud native technology, uh, using Google uh, environment and really um, automate your, your DevOps lifecycle by uh, security as code, yes, obviously, um, uh, as code. So this is 
obviously what is happening now more and more into modern application security. And the risk here is, is very much that um, uh, is, is about misconfiguration, yeah? Is about uh, the, the fact that uh, uh, buckets can be left uh, with external access. It, it can be the, the risk that uh, there are uh, software vulnerabilities that you leverage as a developer from external um, piece of software from libraries. So it's really about how do I protect the, um, the, the software lifecycle before it's too late, before there is a, uh, an exposure into production. And right now there is obviously tools that are uh, scanning everywhere. And also uh, there's a lot of false positives into, uh, into the scan and, and the test results for application security. So we are addressing this uh, software lifecycle um, uh, risk uh, assessment and risk management by a, a solution which is um, uh, helping scan the software uh, management lifecycle risks on the build, deploy, and run phase. And that goes into the, the integrated into the, the CICD pipeline of your customer. So what is that solution? So the solution is called uh, 40 DevSex. It is, uh, it is a scanner, which is uh, running against uh, all possible scanner into a SAST, which is vulnerability um, uh, detection. It is secret detection. It is static and dynamic uh, scanning into the, the test phase pre-deployment. Um, and then it is about application security dynamic testing into production, yeah, into the deployment and production phase. So we, we have that platform, which is really integrated into the, the customer uh, CICD pipeline, and it's called 40 DevSec. So, uh, so this is about, uh, obviously, um, uh, how do I, uh, you know, how do I manage my, uh, risk profile and my exposure into the, the development development pipeline. Uh, so I'm going a bit, that's a bit of the marketing slide. So I'm, I'm going a bit fast and I will go into a demo. Uh, yeah, so we have that integration with Jenkins, with plugins, with uh, Arnes, GitHub, obviously Circle, Bamboo, Travis, and Azure DevOps. So you can really, the customer is, is um, and also for sure, uh, Kubernetes and other platforms. So we have that integration. So there's no, um, there's no AppSec expertise. You don't need to create something custom. Uh, this is uh, all, um, I would say, integrated and all centralized into central scanning application. Okay. Uh, so this is, uh, so let's go into the demo because I, I, I don't want to, to share too many slides. Uh, okay, so, all right, so if you see my screen still, hoping, or otherwise I will uh, try to share again, is that okay? Good, thank you already. So yeah, so 40 DevSec, um, 40 DevSec is, uh, as I said, is, is, the, is, is a scanning platform, which is um, uh, across the life cycle, and then you configure 40 DevSec to your cluster, to your Kubernetes, to your uh, CI/CD uh, environment. So the first thing is you, you, you configure it, yeah? You create, uh, you see new applications and then you synchronize it and you run it, yeah? As, as you have configured it. And then it's, it runs a scan, as you see. Uh, it's it's um, automatically adapting the scan to the current uh, environment. So you don't really have to decide which scan is run against your cluster. Uh, it runs a static, dynamic, and software analysis scan. And, uh, and then you just review the results, and then you can drill into the results, and you can take actions, yeah? So if, if I take, for example, um, uh, yeah, the, my Python app here, uh, you click uh, into that. So it's, um, you see the result of the static scan. You see the vulnerabilities found, and you have the vulnerabilities found obviously by um, uh, risk rating. So you don't have to, to spend all your time on uh, vulnerabilities which are not relevant. So you see that um, uh, the, 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 the most exposure is clearly into this uh, SAST scanning here. So you will try to check that. 
and then you can see uh, what are the main vulnerabilities which are um, which are identified so you will select critical to low and you see there's there's one critical and there is a couple of uh, high vulnerabilities and these are really the ones you want to address yeah you don't need to address all the the medium uh, vulnerabilities usually you would focus into the critical ones and and here um, then you can click into that and you have all the details of that vulnerability uh, where is it, where is that into your code yeah uh, where it's located uh, how to um, obviously uh, what is the risk what is the issue and then uh, if you want to uh, when it has been appearing and then you can obviously take an action directly to uh, access your application and and modify the the code yeah uh, so this this is uh, this is obviously quite key. And then as a workflow, once you have addressed this uh, vulnerability, you will just click in here and you will just confirm or accept the risk or remove the the risk. So you can um, come back into the management uh, console and you can update the the, the, the risks uh, report and um, you know obviously address what has been closed. Yeah, you, you can see obviously the. The, the, the different uh, categories, you can review uh, what has been done against the, the files, against the directory for the, the, the libraries, and you can access the risks yeah, by the different uh, type on top of by application. Uh, but obviously the, the most logical approach is by application. So then you can do an assessment of your application risk and you can scan and then you can run and, and, and obviously address the risk one by one. Okay, so this is running as as I said on uh, uh, static scanning. It's uh, it's dynamic scanning. It aggregates all the the scan results into uh, uh, the risk rating. Then you can filter by risk rating. You can address. You can update it as as you've seen here. And then you you uh, you you will uh, have complete central visibility on uh, on um, on the different platform. Obviously, uh, 40 DevSec is not the only one into, um, into uh, container and application scanning. You have a few different tools like Sync, uh, GitHub, GitLab, which have uh, their own scanning uh, environment and platform. Uh, we have obviously um, designed and deployed 40 DevSec as being really uh, rich in terms of uh, breadth and depth of application scanning. And then uh, the price is also quite uh, interesting, yeah. Uh, as it regroups all the possible scans and secret detection, uh, you will see that uh, we are quite competitive for for such a solution compared to the the rest of the the players there. Okay, so I wanted to go a bit fast on container security, not to use the the, the whole day, but um, we have quite a nice value prop uh, as you've seen. Uh, about uh, using FortiGate, FortiWeb to protect the container traffic and the container themselves, uh, using FortiCWP for container monitoring, risk assessment, protection and compliance assessment ongoing, real time, and then using application development um, FortiDevSec for application development security scanning and remediation. So using um, obviously the standard uh, fabric solutions to protect the container, uh, getting visibility on container risks and compliance, and then uh, scanning and remediating the risks here. Uh, with, with this, you really can propose to your customer um, a complete secured platform to manage their container and their application development into um, into the cloud, yeah. So this is this is something I wanted to highlight because it's not really known. I don't think we have had a, ever um, a presentation in, in Switzerland to you as our partner. And as um, as uh, Adrian said, uh, this is not uh, the end of the story because uh, it goes real fast. So if you need help, if you want to deep dive in any of these solutions, if you want to uh, engage with your customer on container security. Uh, please um, ask for support. We are really happy to help. Yeah. Okay. So that was the the quick overview on container security. Uh, any question on on your side?
let me check. I don't know if it was uh, clear and useful. Uh, there's, there's quite a lot, obviously, we can go into, but um, yeah, uh, I prefer to go a bit fast versus uh, uh, going in depth. And uh, I think it's better that, that you come back to us. Yeah? If you want to go in depth into this architecture and how to use the different solutions, happy to assist. I think that's the best approach. Yeah? No question, anyone? No, at the moment. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please raise your hand or uh, put it in the chat or the Q and A. Just, just a last comment. Uh, Forty DevSec, yeah, has been released. Um, I think a month ago. So it's a recent product. You, I'm not sure you have heard about it, but this is uh, something which is really interesting and promising. So it's it's it's, it's a great solution. Uh, 40, um, 40 uh, CWP for container, which I've been showing to you, has been released uh, more than a year ago. And uh, this is something which uh, is evolving very much. We have a new release expected into the uh, end April, May timeframe, as I said, that will, um, uh, I would say, extend uh, that solution into a workflow approach. So this is something that we are really investing within Fortinet to uh, help customer into their um, digital journey for protecting uh, applications and container. Um, also, obviously, um, as you, you have seen before, yeah, the, the default architecture for container security, network security for container, this is something you will find on GitHub. And uh, we can point to you. So if you want to uh, review and uh, if you want to uh, obviously test and experience, then please uh, do so and uh, happy to assist. Yeah. So all of this is, is an area which is, um, is not by the way. So Fortinet is, is very much investing and, and we are looking to be a leader into, uh, into this environment. Yeah. Just so you know. So if there is no question, back to you, uh, really. Yes, OK. Um, yeah, many thanks to uh, Philip and uh, Adrian for the very interesting session on security as code. Uh, we learned quite a bit of how uh, we can leverage Fortinet's orchestration automation features for us and our end customers. And yeah, if uh, there are any more questions uh, please feel free to post them in the chat or q and a or uh, raise your hand and if not um, yes we will um, share uh, the recording and the presentations uh, afterwards and i think uh, i would like uh, to point out our next session on 40 mail on uh, 7th of april and I check if there are some questions now. No. Yeah, it's oh, good. Everything was clear, easy. So you're all ready <laughs> for security automation now. So that's great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank, you, yes. Thank you very much for your participation. And I'm looking forward to welcome you at another session and uh, hopefully soon again on site. It was a great pleasure. Thanks again for your support and participation. Great day. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.